All right, so one of the things that Steve has really uh, expanded on here, and I'm here with Ryan, who's the operations manager here at Steve's Leaves, is their Hoya collection, which is marvelous because Hoyas are one of my favorite plants. And in fact, <laughs> we're standing underneath this giant Hoya Comingiana, which is in flower right now. And it's actually one of my favorite Hoyas that I had first seen in Singapore. But Ryan's gonna take us through some of the amazing Hoyas that Steve has in his collection. This episode is brought to you by Herb Farm. For those of you interested in using herbs and herbal remedies within your lifestyle, then I would encourage you to look into Herb Farm, which produces a number of high quality herbal extracts to promote health and well being. They grow many of the herbs themselves at their certified organic farms in Southern Oregon and work with wild crafters who ethically source herbs in their native habitats. Herb Farm makes it simple to find what may work for you and provides both single ingredients and proprietary blends that bolsters your immune system any season, helps support healthy brain function, and can calm and distress you, for example. Many of their herbal extracts can be taken regularly. You just squeeze to get a dropper full, add to two ounces of water, tea, or juice, and then drink. There is suggested use on all the bottles. You could check out their range of herbal extracts over at herb-farm.com. Now keep in mind that none of these statements on herbal remedies have been evaluated by the FDA, so I encourage you to do your own research, which I find to be very empowering. So these are all the Hoyas you have? This or? is all of our Hoyas, and it's wow. building every single day. I love like this, this kind of old fashioned, you know, Oh yeah. Folder drawer. <laughs> That's the thing. We're we're old school meets new school here all yeah. the time. So I love it. It feels like still so human, you know what I mean? Absolutely. A actually going, you know, going to the Netherlands and seeing how everything is so automated and so digital, you you kind of lose that human touch to it. Right. Yeah. Yep. We do a lot of uh, a lot of old school stuff for sure. <laughs> so let's go see those Hoyas. Sure. So they're intertwined in here. Um but here is Hoya Nicholsonia, New Guinea Ghost. Mmm, look at that color. Which is just color. beautiful. Silver. I mean, lots of silver, just with some small fleckings yep. of a darker green. Here's Silver Dollar. Oh, that's different. Yep, this one's okay. coming out of this top one. So this one is that with the little fleckings, and then this one doesn't seem to have any fleckings. No, it's just solid silver. Wow. It needs to be cut, but I knew we were going to be talking Hoya, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut it quite yet. And then do you know the flowers? Like what flowers? I have not seen either one of these. Yeah. Nicholsonia, I believe, has a white flower, but I haven't seen this one bloom yet. Yeah. I know, and that's the thing with a lot of these is we're still waiting and it's always a surprise. I mean, you can look up the flower, but mm -hmm. seeing it in person, uh, it, it's- And smelling it's, it in and person. And smelling it in person because they all have such different smells and textures. You know, some are fuzzy. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a very diverse, you know, genus. Let's see what else we have in here. We have a lot of ones on the bottom here, I guess, This right? is all the stuff, this is uh, stuff that we've propped and it's waiting to, to root in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all on different, we have everything marked with our week number, uh, the plant that was done, who did it, mm -hmm. the exact date and the date of the week. And my love for Hoya when I first got here was really based on necessity. Um, they do not have to go on our mist system. So when I first got here, it was like, you took my spot on the mist and I, there's not enough room. So I said, well, I'll just grow something that doesn't have to go on there and not have to deal with that. So I picked Hoyas, so. Um, and, and what do you think it is about the Hoya, the constitution of the Hoya that precludes it from having to be on the mist bench? They just bench? don't need uh, excess moisture when they're rooting in. Um, so I was off to the races, really. So we started collecting. I think we had maybe five varieties five years ago when I started. Now we probably have over 200. I don't have a mist bench uh, set up or a greenhouse at this stage of the game, but I have rooted some Hoyas at home. And I found that some of the ones with like green stems that have chlorophyll in the stem seem to be, to me, a lot easier to root than say something that has a more woody stem or that has, is hairy or something along those lines. What's your experience? Yeah, I mean, we have, there's a few of these like your, um, 
Lauterbachii and um, some of your areostemas, the real fuzzy backed, they are difficult. Um, occasionally we will root them. They do need a little bit extra humidity. We'll root them sometimes in a box. Um, if you put them on the mess, it's just too much. They tend to rot. Um, but we will sometimes put them in a prop box um, in the greenhouse because they're, they're hard to root in. They're, that's really the only one that I've found that's, it's just difficult. That whole, that whole group of those Hoyas don't really root well. Um, but uh, the other ones are pretty much bulletproof. Um, you just gotta make sure that, you know, they're not hanging under something like a Tratoscantia basket that we're watering every single day. Right. That's the main thing in here is because we have so many levels, you have to really, you know, stage it to where they're not gonna get dripped on all the time. Yeah. Well, this one's like under this one, but you probably don't water these as much as. <laughs> right, yeah, you see that we try to keep them. And there are some that are under trad baskets just because yeah. of the real estate that we have. We're forced to make some decisions <laughs> that we don't want to, but we try not to if at all possible. Here's AH074. So that one has not yet been identified or Correct. given a name. It looks as if they have some new leaves coming up there, right here. Yep. Some nice new leaves. And that also has a nice splashy appeal to the leaves. And the the first, the, the two letters that you see there are initials, and I don't know who the AH is, but mm. um, they're initials of the person who discovered it. And then they put a collection number at the end showing that that's, that, that you know, they, they go up into the thousands on some of the collection numbers before. It's very similar to um, the U-numbered system that they have in begonias. So they have to assign it something so that there's track of it. Um, but then, uh, you know, a botanist will come in and then formally name it, and they will take the, the, the numbers and the initials off of it and put a, a botanical name on it. To my knowledge, it takes actually quite some time to do that because they have to go to all the different taxonomic so sources and herbarium sources right. and say, yeah, this is actually unique or new. <laughs> and that's the thing with begonias is Don has, um, he has a lot of different begonias that he wants people, you know, he wants to get a name on it, but it's finding somebody that has the time and the resources to do that. And there's not always those resources. So it might stay with an AH074 number for many, many years before somebody actually puts a name on it. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we have. They are scattered through here. It's kind of just finding real estate when you can find it. Mm -hmm. oh, here's, a, here's a large bench of yep. Hoya. So this one's interesting. Ooh, that's spiky. Almost so, looks like a equicetum. <laughs> so this is Hoya spartioides. It's from Borneo. I definitely have seen this in uh, Tareel's houseplant tour back in Sweden. So what I haven't seen with this plant, and I, I guess we've emulated Borneo, is these are all peduncles, and in cultivation it does not normally have leaves, it's just the peduncles. But, if you can see on this, mm -hmm. this one actually does have the leaves that it has in the wild. Oh, yeah. Look at, it's like towards the base of it. Yeah. Wow. So I don't know, I don't know if it, I mean it looks as though we've got it probably a little more damp than what we would normally have a Hoya, so it, it may just require more moisture and we're not giving it that in cultivation. I think what's also interesting, and I don't know if it's because you're giving it like top-down lighting or whatever, but the how structural it is with all of the peduncles facing directly up in the air. Yeah. You know, it's very cool and it just makes me think that the pollinator needs to like, it, it, it's like, hello, a full salute, like it needs to <laughs> needs to get the pollinator's attention. And they only open at night. They're little orange flowers. You can see one of the, there's some of the flower right there. That's weird, it only opens up at night. It it's only opens at night. It's an orange flower, which orange, I would always think like, I would not think of a, like a moth at night. You know, if it was right. white and it's happening at night, I'd be like, okay, that's moth pollination. Orange is peculiar because I would think like, you know, orange, I think of like a hummingbird or a sunbird or a bee, like right. something that is not a night dwelling creature. Right. That's, that's, that's confounding. That's interesting. <laughs> Let's see. Here's Obavada Super Splash. Oh, that is a Super Splash. So name for it. this actually came, it's a sport off of my green Obavada. No, yeah. really? That's cool. And we, cool. we isolated it and now I've got a couple of them, but at times the splash can be a, a real pink. pink. Yeah. 
It seems very um, stable. Yeah, it's just strange because a lot of people talk um, light and stuff with splash, and this was in a dark corner that was a mutation that came off of a green plant that was under the same lighting conditions. So it's more genetic than it is lighting or environmental factors to me, it, from what I've seen in the greenhouse and just my experience with it. Mm -hmm. um, because this was in real low light over on our mist, uh, close to our mist area up in a hanging basket. Hmm. So um, from my experience, it's a more of a genetic mutation than it is environmental factors. Yeah. Way Manier. That's this is nice. a weird the, one. The crinkle, crinkle. Yeah. Does, is it a little fuzzy along the it's edges? It's fuzzy on the back, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Oh, nice. That's nice. That's nice to the touch. It's like a little kitty. Yep. <laughs> Curtisii. And on these, I think that um, from what I've seen that's commercially available on these guys, they're not as splashy. And, and I think that it, I think it's, it's the variety that we initially started with because mm. ours are really, really splashy. And what you see in um, some of the big box stores is more of a green variety of it. Um, so I think ours, I personally, I like ours a lot better just because of the color of them. Yeah, I like also the, the plum color that is yeah. in with the real silvery green. And you know, that, that's, that's very nice. These guys are getting close to bloom. They only bloom one time a year. Um, it's generally in the fall. And they're, for the size of plant, they're pretty large clusters of flowers. I mean, they'll be this big. Yeah. So it's, it's weird. You'll come in here and they're, they're, they're nothing flashy. They're, they kind of blend into the plant, um, but it's a really sweet smell. Um, it's unique. It, I think it smells like fresh cut watermelon. Um, I have a strange nose, but the, <laughs> other people have told us the same thing. But when you come over early morning, these guys are just, it's just emanating from this area and you don't notice the flower, but you notice the smell. And that's the case with a lot of this is we'll walk over here in the morning and it's like, where are you? And then, you know, we find this little flower that's, you know, growing up something and hanging behind another basket. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's late afternoon, sometimes it's morning. It's just what pollinator they're trying to bring in is, you know, the time and the, that they're gonna be putting out all their smell. These are nice and compact, but they do trail very nicely as well. Yeah, they make a great hanging basket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I just want to, is this, is this, what, which one is this? This is carry eye. Oh yeah, carry eye, okay. I did, it tricked me because yeah, it didn't it's have. On, sometimes they some, lose that kind of lobe on yeah. them. It's so funny, these are very meaty leaves. And you can tell, if you see up there. Oh yeah. We it's let them get pretty long. There. Those were cut. Um, to, to show you the resilience of Hoya. Yeah. Those were cut two months ago. And it's still green. It's still green and, and I mean, it's not, it's not a really happy, but mm -hmm. it's not dead. Yeah. You know, what plant can you cut, leave it on a trellis, yeah. you know, for a couple of months and it's still alive. I think it also helps that, again, it's a, it's a type of variety that has chlorophyll also in its stem and I find those to be far more resilient. Yeah. I thought this was gonna be open while you were here, so I'm disappointed, oh. uh, the flower that is. This is Sulawasiana. It's from Sulawasi, clearly. But the flower on this is, and I can give you some shots, is super fuzzy and pink. It looks like a teddy bear. <laughs> and I, I got this specifically because of the bloom. You know, it's got nice foliage too, long, long leaves, uh, you know, thick leaves. Mm -hmm but the flower, and the, the bad thing about the flower is it doesn't stay, it's, it's, it's there and gone. I mean, it, it just, it falls off and it's only there, you barely get to take a picture of it before it's gone. And uh, it seems like it's always that way with the ones that have the really pretty flowers, they're right. just, it's just a blink and they're gone. Um, well, I wonder if like the extra pretty flowers that we all actually deem pretty are that pretty for that reason. Right. Yeah. Would you hold me if I told you we can just run away? So come, my darling, let me help you. We can follow the sun and leave the rain for somebody else. Let's help ourselves. Leave our
Carnosa Wilbur Graves, the Russian form. Ooh, that's cool. I've never seen that. I'm assuming it's named after the guy who cultivated it, maybe? I think so. That's really nice. And it also seems really, uh, yeah, just kind of that, that pinky, kind of silvery yeah. splash. Very there. nice. Here's Sigillatus, which looks like a, uh, to me, it's like a small form of pubicalyx but you know it stays that kind of stressed color yeah. you know instead of the emerging leaf on a pubicalyx that you get this super red color almost all the time i've seen this in a lot of folks collection and i think that the the stressed red color is yeah. something that people really enjoy about hoya they have some cultivars like sunrise or something like that mm -hmm. that are that are yeah very i've popular actually got uh, i've got sunrise over there and it's super stressed right now yeah. so i might get you a shot of that Here's some cultivar. There are cultivars in Hoyas. This is Noel. I like the cultivars too. I mean, why not? Yeah. That's cool. It's a nice little red edging too. Uh huh. Funny story about this plant is it was somebody had hung it up in a high spot over here and it got missed. And Noel was not looking good. <laughs> and now it's back. I mean, it was all but dead. I mean, yeah. it had no water left in it at all. Wow. Uh, but it bounced back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my favorites here. This is Iris Marie. This is another cultivar. Yeah, um, nice. it's, a nice, it's a nice one. It's looking a little bronzy too. Yeah, so that the, the uh, leaves when they first open have this kind of model look to them and they're more red. This guy, super thirsty, takes a lot of water, grows extremely fast for a Hoya, um, has uh, white flowers, super fragrant, but mine don't bloom that much. I've only had them bloom, I mean, I've had them for about a year and their blooming cycle was just once. It almost looks a little semi-terrestrial to me. Yeah. You know, to a certain extent, you know how some are a little bit more hemi-epiphytic or epiphytic and then you have some, just a, f a small few of them that are terrestrial, you know, right. like the, and then this one seems kind of halfway in between to me, but. Yeah, it's just the speed to which it grows too. I mean, this guy, it roots in, you know, twice as fast as the majority of the others. Here's another Carnosa. It's Carnosa Gray Ghost. Mm. Got a crinkly leaf too on yeah. this one. I don't know if it's the specimen or if it's the actual cultivar. Carnosa is a very, that, that portion of Hoya is really diverse. Yeah. I and mean, you have, you know, Splash, you have. This is a, a one that I think you've had in your collection for a while, right? Yep. Steve has Breviolata. This one's been here for a while. This is Breviolata. This is the one I, when we were talking in our Zoom call yeah. that I said has a very, I wouldn't say unpleasant, but you don't want to go in hot on the bloom. <laughs> it's a, kind of a sour smell. It reminds me of buttermilk, um, but definitely not something that that you that's extremely pleasing. Yeah. Here is Hoya meridithii. That's getting huge. Huge leaves. Yeah. I mean, I have to stand back in order to fit this in the, <laughs> the whole frame. I love the contrasting venetian. Oh, too. it's amazing. And I didn't know they would get this big. I mean, mm. they, for the most part, they stayed about like this. And then all of a sudden, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And this is a funny one. This is not actually a Hoya, it's a Deschidia. But when I got it, it was labeled Hoya bangalensis. And we went to put one of these things up on auction. Yeah. Kevin kept saying, I just don't see a Hoya bangalensis. I see a Deschidia bangalensis, yeah. but I don't see a Hoya. It's because there wasn't one that I knew. <laughs> it was, it, this was, and there may be a, a um, but this is Deschidia bangalensis. Yeah. Thanks to Kevin for doing a, a just a, yeah, a little doing the work. extra due diligence. On oh, you that. get something in that's labeled. It's in the same you know, kind of. It's in the same, same family. family. Yeah. So, yeah. It's it's honestly, oftentimes I see that where different genera get like jostled around, and it could be uh, 
you know, just a, a, a honest error, you know? Right. And you have some that, that get reclassified. Uh, Hoya insularis used to be, um, it has the inward facing flowers. It used to be, it was uh, a Deschidia and they reclassified it as a Hoya. Hmm. So this is the green form of the New Guinea ghost that you saw up there. This is the, just Nicholsonia. And there's three that I have that look very similar. The flowers are different, but I have Nicholsonia, and then I have Fitchii, and then uh, Butleriana, and they all look very similar, but their flowers are different. Huh. I'm and this is the only one I've seen flower. This one's very nice. It has this kind of delicate veination, you know, compared to something like this, for instance, which has like this more... Guy on gating? Yeah. And this is a stressor. It's one of those that, you know, you buy and you want it, you want it stressed out. Right. And this is one that's almost an ever bloomer for us. Uh, this is Lacanosa snow caps. Little bitty white flowers, but super fragrant, kind of a rose scent and they bloom almost year round. Mm. Of course, I don't see any right now that I'm saying that, but this is one of my favorites. This is Hoya Sangia Albo Marginata. So delicate. Yeah. It's just got that little white margin on it. Yeah. The leaves are just real small. Nice growth form, like almost like, you know, grass-like, a bit more grass-like, not as grass-like as Retusa, but very nice, thin leaf. Behind us, which I have these in two spots, this is Hoya clemenciorum. Look at the back of that leaf, it's like a paddle. Yeah. And I, again, the venation where it, it has this like texture to it, that's yeah. probably a really perfect leaf right there, look at that. It is a Jurassic looking plant. It if, is. Hoya, if you ever found one, this would be it. I mean, it looks like reptile skin. Yeah. When you say Jurassic, it reminds me just a, a bit of like I'm petting a, a dinosaur or a tur tortoise or something. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that has that bloom that I was describing that kind of smells like Clorox bleach. Uh, yeah. And, because uh, like, I, I've smelled some Nepenthes that have that kind of Clorox smell. Yeah. When I first started searching, though, for Hoya, this was, this was my guy. I had to track it down, but it was like, I have to have that. You know, it was one of those things like, I, I can't, there's no way it looks like that in real life. There's just no way that it's really like that. It's got to be Photoshopped, and it's not. Yeah. It's great when you get something in person, that you see on Instagram or anywhere on social media and you just assume that it's just been doctored. Yeah. It, it has to be, there's no way it can be that perfect. And it's like, it is, you know? Uh, if it just had a good smelling bloom. <laughs> <laughs> but you, as we all know that people often get Hoyas not just for their blooms, Absolutely. but also for their leaves yeah. as well. And most of the stuff that I have, I'm, you know, we're not a, a flowering greenhouse. So most of the stuff we get is for foliage. You're Steve's leaves, not Steve's flowers. He says it all the time. That's <laughs> his That's his uh, statement for sure. Let's see, here's a good one. Silver Lady. Hmm. This is for my ladies. <laughs> all my ladies out there, this is the Silver Lady. Yeah, it's nice stressing up a little bit. Yeah. What's this tiny little leaved one behind it? Uh, this is... Latensis. Latensis. Cool, a little red margin. Yep. And look at this one reaching out at me, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a pretty color. Yep. Is that like an Australis? Yep, this is Lisa. Ah, okay. And Lisa is, uh, it does revert. So it's hard keeping Lisa. It's one of the prettiest Hoyas because yeah. um, it has that emerging, you know, red leaf. But um, you can see it starting to go here. Yeah. So it's uh, from a grower aspect, it's it's kind of a problem just mm -hmm. because you're having to deal with it like you do other variegated plants. But that's part of it with variegation. You know that it's never it never wants to stay that color, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's for its benefit you could also look at it from that perspective right. of like hey if you, you want this plant living or you want it kind of half living you know that's right at the end absolutely of the day. it probably knows what's best for it self this is a fun one it's got cool little leaves this is rigidifolia good name i like the little drip tip yeah the way that it just kind of puckers in at the edge here 
nice feeling, nice textured leaf too. Oh, Hoya densifolia is actually quite nice. Yeah. Mine has gotten very, 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 very large. One has mealybugs on it though, so I have to, I had to cut it back, but it's actually a pretty, pretty prolific grower for me. Yeah, it's more upright too. Yeah, it's much uh, more upright. Kind of, it's a lot more like the, it's similar to me as Cumingiana, that's more, yeah. you know, not more of a trailer, more of an upright. Yeah, upright and kind of like, likes to lean on something, yeah. you know. I think when I think about a lot of the growth forms of Hoyas, a number of them you see on the interstitials of a forest, kind of just growing over the tops of trees or right. the tops of fences, that type of thing. And here is your upright Hoya. We'll come back to Paul Shirley Eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hoya Kamingiana I first saw in Singapore in a Singapore nursery tour, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> because I loved, I loved the structure of it, the leaf, it was like semi-succulent. It wasn't flowering at the time, but this is very nice to see. Ooh, such a beautiful flower. What does it smell like? Oh, it smells nice. Yeah. A little cinnamon Kind of got a little cinnamon yeah. to it. And this is one of those plants, if you're in a home and you don't want something that will strangle other plants or grow all over the place, this one's manageable. I mean, it doesn't, uh, you can tell it gets big, but it doesn't mm -hmm. get out of hand. Mm. Um, kind of reminds me of uh, kind of a, like a ZZ type, you know, that's more of an upright. Yeah, you're right. Oh, with its weight kind of goes down a little bit, but as a hanging basket plant, it's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen them um, grown in a home, the, uh, the inner nodes, it, they get real stretched out. I've yeah, seen them that yeah. it's almost unrecognizable to what we have because they're just, you know, really, really stretched out. Yeah. Here's one that is in bloom. It's not open right now, but that's Paul Shirley eye. Ooh, that's a nice tiny little inflorescence that looks like it's about to pop. And some of these open and close, so they may have more than one cycle. Hmm. So uh, they might open up one day, close, and then open back, and they do that in, you know, for a few days. Yeah. I wonder if it's also, like, dictated on light. Because you know how, like, in the early mornings, I often see, and of course I'm speaking from the temperate zone <laughs> perspective, but, like, when it's a little too wet, a little too cool, the pollinators are not out. But in the, the ze when the sun is at, a, at its zenith, that's when the pollinators, like, go really full force. So I wonder... I wonder if there's like a cycle like that for these plants. This is one of my favorites. Ooh. It's recently been cut on. That's Pestilipus. That's like little fingerprints indented in there. Yeah, and it's funny because we joke, you know, names and stuff, and I said, that's dentifolia. <laughs> and it's like, and somebody was like, I have dentifolia, and I was like, don't put that on the tag. It's not <laughs> dentifolia, it's Pestilipus. <laughs> And then that's another one behind it that yeah. I don't, I'm not familiar with. It is Paxtonii. It's more of that Bella look. Mm -hmm. it has, it's real similar to Bella. I'm sure the flowers are different. I haven't seen this one bloom. We haven't had it very long. But. Yeah. And then you have your fishtail hoya. Polynura. Yeah. Used to be a common one and then became like so expensive. <laughs> yeah. Here's another one of those that has a, this is a UT number that's UT038, it's from Flores Island. I don't even know where Flores Island is. I would assume Indo-Pacific somewhere, but wow. I like don't know specifically where it is either. But in person, this thing is, I mean, look at that guy. Yeah. It's kind of like a, if I, if I looked up Hoya leaf in the encyclopedia, like that's the one I would see. Yeah. It's like textbook. I like it's that real dark green too. Yeah. Let's, Let's look at the pentaflevia behind it because it also has the uh, ridges in the leaf up here. You can see the yep. new leaf. Yeah. Nice large leaf. Verstigia is a good one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> look at the look at the little puppy dog oh, leaf. Oh my goodness! Look at that. And it's as fuzzy to touch as it is to look at. It Looks like a little mouse. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> and it looks like it loses some of the 
fuzz, but not all of it. Not all of it, it on underneath, yeah. the underneath side on the big. Oh yeah, look at that. Kind of reminds <clears throat> me of the fuzziness nature of some of the oak leaf Colin Coe and things along those lines. Yep. Very nice. Let's see what else. That's not one I'm familiar with, but nice, uh, nice long longitudinal veins. Yeah, and it's similar. It's similar to Sulawesiana. I'm wondering if it, it it grows in like a very wet area because I I see like the veins are like just trying to get the water off right. the leaf, you know, that type of thing. It's like a little a slip and slide. Huh? Look at this leaf. <clears throat> wow, bizarro. Speaking, that looks like a mermaid's tail, but it's just <laughs> like, it looks like a, an unusual form of it. Something probably hit it up here when yeah. it was young, you know, and caused it to mutate a little bit. Cool though, right? That's it, Finlaysonii classic. This looks like it almost has two leaves combined. Yeah. Because there's see, two veins. You see this happen with begonias a lot too, hmm. where the leaf will split and it will mutate like that. Hmm. Totally cool. This one's a good stressor too. That's Bordini eye. Erythrostemma, which means it has a red stem, I would imagine. Kind of red. Yeah. But there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, Hoya that have red stems. <laughs> Here is Hoya obscura, which. It gets real, it's a good stressor. I don't have a highlight bay here, so if it's, you know, some people have a super highlight bay and they put their Hoyas in that to stress them. I don't really have that. Some stress it, even the, the diffuse light that we have. Hoyas um, don't need a tremendous amount of light. You know, I, I've been down to some growers who are growing in 60% shade. I always found it to be quite peculiar when I go to a botanic garden and you see Hoyas in particular, and even Dyskidias in particular, growing in the succulents and cacti, and they are completely yellowed out. Right. You know, because they're almost, <clears throat> they're too stressed, you know, to that to that point that it's de it's destroyed the chlorophyll. I actually moved all of my Hoyas, this is the same light as the other three bays, I actually moved all of my Hoyas to a bay over there because I saw your Thailand uh, Hoya tour, yeah. where they were under 80% shade. Yeah. And we were cooking them over here because we mm -hmm. were growing coleus and uh, a lot of succulents. Because of that video, you probably saved, you know, three quarters of my Hoyas because I moved them all to a lower light bay and they did so much better. Uh, once we put extra poly on here, we moved them back over here. Everyone um, makes the same error, I think, because they even shared they started growing them under too high of light. Yep. And then I also looked at the leaf and I say, oh, wow, this is a very succulent leaf let me put it under a ton of light, you know? And you think that that's the way to go be just because based on the nature of the morphology of the leaf. And then you find out maybe that's not so. <laughs> that's a great episode. If yeah. you're a Hoya fan, I would suggest going back to it. I'm sure she'll have a link to it in there, but yeah. it's fantastic the way that, I mean, it's, there's so many that they have. I mean, they so have many and growing them in so many different, like they're, one is a hanging and they're also growing as a as a climbing plant like they always have one of each growing in different ways and i thought that was quite quite clever too let's see the best way that it grows right. either co coming up and trail or trailing down i thought that was kind of cool and that's where i learned like when you go to like wikipedia and it says oh there's only like 300 or 400 species of hoya and then i realized like Nah, it's way more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they've got a few more than that. <laughs> yeah. Here's one of those fuzzy guys that have the large flowers. 
So this is Areostemma, and it's got a chocolate Ooh, colored chocolate flower. flower. These are, um, they're hard to get to flower in cultivation. Uh, Lauterbachia would be another one that's, it's, you know, it's just a, a huge flower. Uh, they have been done, um, but they really have to be growing up something and they have to be really old before they actually flower. Mm. These guys are uh, the ones that I said that they're not easy to propagate. Yeah, this whole section yeah. of them, they just, um, and they're super fuzzy, so. Speaking of fuzzy, Hoya velosa, which also means fuzzy. Doesn't I have velosa fuzzy, and though. I have globulosa, and globulosa is... Globulosa is also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's quite a bit longer than the velosa, but this is a new one that we've got. I don't... Cysti... Cystiantha? Cystiantha? Yeah. Hmm. But fill the leaf. Oh, nice. Yeah, the texture of yeah, the, the leaf is just amazing. It's, it's very waxy, actually. Yeah. It has this like thin layer of wax on it. This one's got a funny name. Tomataensis. Yep. Hoya tomataensis. It kind of looks like tomato the way that it's... <laughs> Do you know what kind of color flower it has? I have not seen this one bloom. I wonder if it looks like, a, like an orange tomato. <laughs> Be nice, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing here is, you know, we are a production greenhouse, so I'm not waiting for something to bloom. So if it blooms, it blooms, but um, we're cutting on these things, or hopefully we're cutting on these things too often, um, but um, some Would, we do let grow out and they'll get a bloom on them. If but. it blooms, like the Hoya Comingiana, would you recommend uh, just refraining from cutting? At then, at then, we don't, do we don't use that as a, as a measurement yeah. in here. Um, but, um, you know, the, the peduncle is on there and some of these things you can propagate them and that peduncle stays for, you know, we, we will send stuff out of here with something that is close to blooming. So uh, that is the advantage of uh, if you're purchasing from us that you might get something, I'm not, no, I'm definitely not making that a promise, but you <laughs> might get something that, that already has a flower forming on it. Yeah. We don't cut those off when we do prop, so. This is a cool one. I wish I had a flower picture for you. That ciliata, it's that similar to that other one. Almost looks like from afar, like Peperomia incana. It looks <laughs> like almost exactly. identical to it. Yeah. So uh, the flowers on this guy are um, almost black. They're a real dark purple and they're that wow. big flower that you see uh, with uh, like the one we just showed you over there, the yeah, areostemma. The, yeah. Here's now, these Hoya cronianas, I'm just, I don't know about the super silver, but these are like, when you speak about ever bloomers, like the, this is one that is always constantly blooming for me when I go in and I'm like, what does that smell? <laughs> and it's just like a thick, heavy scent and it's just always blooming. This is Mindarensis. So this is the red form, the red flowered one. Mm -hmm. I have the yellow as well. There's one that they call Mindarensis black, but it's a real dark purple flower. Uh, fuzzy too, real fuzzy flower. We basically have one person that's in charge, really does all of our Hoya prop, and that's Janet. She does a great job, and that's her job. I and mean, she comes in, she's, she's the Hoya lady, so. And one of the things with Hoya, with propagation, that folks should know who may have never propagated is that they do have a latex in them as well. Right, you don't want to get it in your eyes. Yep, maybe not as bad as euphorbia <laughs> in yeah. your eyes, but still you want to have some kind of glove protection and don't wipe your eyes afterwards or near your face. So that's Pubicalyx crossed with Carnosa. Oh, unreal, that's cool. Two commons to make it a little uncommon, yeah. that's nice. And when I got this plant, I got it from uh, a friend of our, our greenhouse that lives in Austin, had it in a 10 inch basket and it was solid. This is one of the original leaves from it. It was solid silver. There wow. was no splash at all. It was a 10 inch basket that was growing all over a trellis area in Austin, Texas. Just this giant silver plant. And I was like, you know, just blown away. I was like, I have to have it. He's like, sure, he gave me this giant cutting and here's what we have, you so know, is, two is years that later. So flower, I'm curious, because the Carnosa has this kind of white, Pupicalyx has this like purplish. Purple. I wonder what flower this has, or if it has flowered. He had pictures of it and, uh, he was supposed to send me pictures and I never, I never got yeah. pictures, but I'm interested too. 
it was fun. It, it had some peduncles on it and they fell off. Yeah. So I never got to see. Hoya Wayedii. This one's Lori a, Lynn. Yeah, this one's a common one, but that's a different cultivar, huh? Yeah, so this is the reverse variegated Wayedii. Mm. But it's, I mean, look at the margin. It's this hot pink. It just stands out. Yeah, very nice. And again, that thin leaf. That's not really what you want, clearly. Lacking the chlorophyll, but yeah. it's amazing looking. But it's only along the, the margins. Yep. Why don't you sh uh, compare it with the regular Wayedii? Yeah. Here's the regular guy. And it still has, it has more of a black margin on yeah. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Makes a nice hanging basket. And then here's the David Comingiana right here. Poya diptera, real shiny leaf. A dip in, uh, a diptera in, uh, in entomology is a fly. I wonder if they... Attract flies? Yeah, attract uh -huh. flies, or maybe they're like, this looks like a flies, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Wings, who knows. So this guy's, look at the splash on this guy. Ooh, pink. It is Wilbur GA, but really pink. Very much so. I mean, almost looks like somebody took a spray can, accidentally sprayed it. And then here's the two carry eyes again, yep. that look more uh, characteristic carry eye. And then this one is the variegata. And there's the reverse. Oh, and then the reverse where there's like, it's like an aurea almost in the center. We're actually moving them. We had them in 10 inch baskets and we're moving them to sixes. They just do better. We've, we've had better luck with them in sixes than hmm. the tens. Ah, found one. Okay. <laughs> so this is the true form bilobata. Oh. What you see sold as bilobata is uh, affinity to Bretonnier. This is the true form bilobata. It's not, there's not really out there a lot. Oh, okay, so yeah, maybe like it's the, so yeah, when you say affinity, the AFF dot Bretonnier, so it, that one doesn't have a species name, but it looks like a Bretonnier, Bretonnier and hasn't been identified right. yet. Okay. But it's commonly, has a bilobata tag on it. Yes. Uh, and this is bilobata. Fascinating. Look at, but it looks different. Yeah, it's totally different. It's totally it doesn't have different. that dark color. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're they're not even similar. Yeah. This guy I almost lost. I, we had um, I had a little three inch pot of it, and it was struggling when I first got here. It was one of those things. It was like my pet plant mm. that you know I I wanted to save and make sure that we had it. And now I've got three six inch hanging baskets and we've done a prop on them already. So good. I'm glad you got <laughs> some backups. It's always good when, uh, you know, you take something that's struggling and you bring it back and then now we've got it in production. So you, you just feel, you know. Vindicated. Totally vindicated. <laughs> this one's different. What's this one? Surgeon and Winslow. Oh, Surgeon. I'm just like finding them randomly in yeah. all different places. Janet's been stashing them all in this bay. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. <laughs> I just grow it. I don't pronounce it. <laughs> Put your Hachar walleye. My gosh, that's uh, that sounds like some type of indigenous language right there, <laughs> unless it's named after somebody. Pretty large leaf. Looks yeah. like they could be have the propensity to get larger. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's gonna be like uh, Meredithia over yeah. there where it just we come in one week and there's this massive leaf, Huge. you know. So this guy, this is a mutation that happened in my greenhouse. This is it was Croniana super silver. Uh-huh which everybody thinks it came from the black one, but it came from super silver. Huh. All of my super silver did a turn and I thought it was just stressing. 
But then I brought in some super silver that stayed super silver. So a mutation happened in this guy and we call it super silver black, but it's fantastic. Gorgeous. But it's got some black, but it's also got some super silver still left yeah. in it. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, and actually take out this one too. This one's even darker. Yeah, look at that. Super. Here's a classic. This is another one of those like, uh, you know, the Clemenciorum that when I saw I had yeah. to have it. That's Callistophylla. It's so funny because this one I was getting as a, I got it as a, as a rooted, like a, not yet a rooted cutting. It's taken so long for that guy to root. I don't know if it's the same for you it's here. It's the same. It's it slow, is. it's hard to root. I mean, it's not 100% success rate with them. Look at the margin on this one. Just randomly, like very. Yeah. Then it goes, you know, it went all yellow. Yeah. There. It, this is one that is very hard for me to find as just a, preg a regular green plant. I, you always find the elbow right. marginata, but not the green one is like, I, I very rarely see it. Here's Fitchii, which has that same look as the, that yeah. I was telling you over there. Very we delicate. We have seen this guy bloom, super fragrant flowers. Mm -hmm. They're kind of a, a orangey, kind of a peach color. And this is the Bertonier. This is Bertonier. Yeah. It's more short and stubby than the AFF. The AFF has a very similar look to it, but it's a longer, it's a lot longer leaf. Hmm. And then I just want to kind of point out some of the uh, Discidias right here because they're still in the same family and it could look like it has that Hoya leaf, but the flower is just so different. It's, it's super tiny too, almost insignificant. And what's crazy about these guys is the Shidia numeralaria. Yeah. It has a super sweet smelling flower that most, it's, you, you miss it because it's so small, but so fragrant. Late afternoon, you're summer, and you're over there looking for a Hoya bloom and it's not there. It's coming from this little bitty flower, um, but they are super fragrant, so. Oh, fun. Yeah. Another fuzzer. Look at these little leaves. Oh my goodness. So Thomasonii. adorable. This guy is very, very slow. I only have the one pot of it, but you can see, see the peduncle? A little fuzzy. Yeah. Tiny, 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 tiny. <laughs> and look at the new growth here. Wow. This is a favorite of mine, man. It's just, it's almost like an animal. Yeah. Here's the traditional Hoya australis. So I don't think this is, this is not a cultivar, right? No, this yeah. is just regular australis. I have mm -hmm. the um, one that's a subspecies with, that looks just like the, this one, but it doesn't have a glossy back. The reverse is fuzzy. This is another subspecies of it. This is subspecies Kesei. Mm, yes, this is one that I have in my house that has a little fuzziness to it. Here is Sunrise. Uh, yes. Have seen this in many houseplant home tours that just that reddening up people really love, growing it under grow lights. Leaves are almost a rectangle. I this love this one. Yeah, Rotunda Flora. flora. Yes. I saw this at uh, Tareel's house in, in where I did a Hoya houseplant home tour with her. And this, that when I saw it, I was like, that's one that I would love to have, yeah. This, uh, this plant, I, I got it because of a recommendation by Kevin. He sent me this picture and he, he always, you know, when we see something cool that we like, we always send somebody, they usually send it to me saying we need this, which I love. So he's like, check out these leaves or it's like a rectangle, you know? It's like, I mean, you look at this guy right here. Mm. So I said, all right, Kevin, I'll go, I'll go get it for you. And now we've got it. Makes a nice hanging basket plant. Yeah. It's good grower, roots easy. Um, haven't seen it flower yet, but, and a lot of this stuff, I mean, we're looking at, you know, some of the stuff I've only had for a year, mm -hmm. um, so. Caudata is uh, one that yeah. I've definitely, I've grown. I like, I like the leaf, it reminds me of like a frog skin. Yeah. And you can pan through here. This one's not new, but the rest of this is 
a new acquisition from about two weeks ago. So every one of these are new Hoyas that I didn't have before. Oh, that you're just rooting up now yeah. and hoping to build up biomass. Which, let's see where it is. Uh, Lois Bois, I never had before. Let's see. There's variegated Cumingiana, Hoya Cumingiana, variegata. Here's Latifolia. Nice leaf right there. A lot of new, they're just small, so a lot of this stuff starts out, you know, we get one cutting in, and then it just builds from there. Yeah. That's how plants grow. Well, <laughs> this is just an amazing tour. Thanks for running around the whole greenhouse. Absolutely. Thank you for coming by. Find all these plants. Awesome, Ryan. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you guys could go to Steve's Leaves and check out some of all these Hoyas, because when I first started buying from Steve, there weren't this many Hoyas. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working pretty hard. Hoyas in this tour, share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget Steve's Leaves is giving our viewers 15% off with code SUMMERRAIN15. Some exclusions do apply, like the auction items. And if you're enjoying our videos, be sure to subscribe, hit the notifications button, and even consider tipping. We give 1% of our Google AdSense revenue to plant conservation initiatives on this channel. And we do a range of online houseplant courses, from Houseplant Basics to the Houseplant Masterclass, which you could check out at your leisure over at homesteadbrooklyn.com and houseplantmasterclass.com. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you in the next episode.